I have a posy bacopolis this morning from the gallery. We have a bunch of these online. They're very nice and springy. Does anybody else have a mug they want to share? Kathy, I see one in your hand. This mug I bought at a thrift shop actually. And it reminds me of a diner mug that was in my favorite diner that was knocked down. So Aww. it's my favorite mug. It's a diner. It's really heavy. And they don't make them like this anymore. You go to a diner and you get a little skinny white mug. This mug makes coffee or tea or anything taste great. I, I love my mug. And I think it's made by a potter. It's got a little thing on the bottom. There's mine. Oh, fun. I love your mug. <laughs> I got it from a glass blower. Todd. So um, welcome everyone. I'm Brian Ross and I run the gallery and the craft fair here at Peters Valley School of Craft. And we are so glad that you could join us. This is the last in our series. So I'm going to miss seeing um, all of you who have joined us every week or most weeks. Um, it's been a lot of fun. So thank you all for participating. And this one is sure to be a treat um, today because we are joined by Tara Locklear who is in North Carolina, and um, she is going to tell us all about her awesome skateboard jewelry. So I am just going to hand it right over to Tara. And um, we do ask you can keep your videos on, but please mute yourselves. And um, we like to keep this really lively. So put any questions you have at any time in the chat, and I will ask them to Tara without interrupting her mid-sentence, but we'll just keep Keep the questions coming the whole time because it makes it a really um, engaging presentation. So please, please, it's your chance to ask Tara anything you want. Um, and she's going to show us around and tell us about her work. So welcome, Tara. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a beautiful, crisp day in North Carolina. It's about 37 degrees, which is really lovely. And the sun is out. So we are in my studio in Nightdale, North Carolina. And like she said, my name is Tara Lockley. I was born and raised in North Carolina. Um, it's really nice to be able to bring you in my studio because my studio is only about a year and a half old. Um, it's the first time I've had a studio with windows. And so it's really nice to be able to have space to work, which I'm sure a lot of you know. Um, my studio is actually uh, detached from my home. So it's out in our yard. We live on about an acre. So right now, uh, the forsythia and the dogwoods and the red buds are actually blooming. So I, I'm looking at uh, flowers instead of sticks, which is really nice. Um, so I'm going to switch over actually to my phone device. So I'm going to mute this for a second, and then I will switch over and we can walk around the studio and I can talk a little bit about the different areas. Okay, can I? Tara, you just have to turn the video on on your phone. Turn the video. Got it. Hi. Little technology difficulty. All right, but I. All right. So let's turn you around. Okay. So I'm going to take you outside and then we'll walk in and I'll give you a, a good idea of the scope. So this is the studio. And you can see everything is blooming. And it's broken into several stations. So down on the end, I have what I call my dirty area. This is where I do all of my sterling silver patina, stainless steel cleaning, as well as all my tumblers. And this is my soldering station. So this is where all of the fabrication of the findings, which you can kind of see are laid out. And they all happen over here. And then if you move over, this is where I fabricate. So this is where all of the sterling silver starts. And that's all the findings that are handmade for all of the work in my collection. 
And I actually use a recipe card system. So since all of my findings are a ton of different styles of production work, I keep an archive of when the findings were created and then if there were edits along the way. Just keeps me kind of on track. And this is the system I was talking about. So this is where all the findings go to live. So when I go to make, I can actually pull out the recipes and be able to recreate them to the scale. If we move over a little bit, this is my setting area. And this is where all of the jewelry goes to be set once it's been carved in the wood shop. So you can kind of see there's some brooches already out. I've got some necklaces that are prepped. I've got ready for the necklace binding here. And then some hoops ready to be set. So you can kind of see they kind of get laid out as they come out of the wood shop. And then this is where everything gets set. I basically set the wood very similar to the way I would fabricate metal smithing. And my woodworking and my metal smithing tend to blend into one another as the way I fabricate each type of area. You can see all the wood dust down in here. So, and then this is all the leather that I use for cords for many of the necklace designs. And then this is where the magic happens in the wood shop. So all of my work is made from reclaimed skateboards and other architectural interior materials that I work with a company here from called Caragreen. Caragreen is a sustainable interiors firm and I'm on their sampling program. So it's really nice to be able to blend those conversations of material within a piece. So you can kind of see everything gets placed based on how it was broken or how it was delivered in the box. And all of my boards, actually I have zero control over. You can kind of see some boxes down here. I work with two skate shops in North Carolina, one in Greenville, North Carolina, where I attended uh, my undergrad um, under Bob Ebendorf and Linda Darty at East Carolina University. And I started getting boards from a skate shop about two doors down from where I worked called Backdoor, which I still get boards from today. And the other shop that I work with is in Wake Forest, North Carolina, and that's called Delicious. And I met them once me and my husband moved to Wake County and um, Raleigh, now Nightdale. So when the boards come, basically each shop holds on to broken boards and just keeps them in the back. And it's this great relationship of working with my community and really being able to bring their stories of writing their histories through these boards to life in a new form of jewelry. And so it's a very beloved relationship that I have because this material also basically brought me back to life after working in corporate. And so at the time, I didn't understand just how much this material was gonna become very important to me throughout my jewelry career. Back in here, you can see where this is where everything gets started as far as like when I pull a board. I do a lot of drawing, designing here. And of course, this is just a very standard, dirty wood shop. You know, I just got finished with a collection that was released yesterday. So everything has its own stations. Let's see. And then this is the last area I wanted to talk about, which is my design area. And so this area here, like I was talking about earlier, 
when I designed the each piece, it actually goes into a paper uh, grid form so I can draw it to scale. And then I create what's called paper maquette. And so you can kind of see on here with the earring design, I cut everything out of paper so it's to scale. And then that gets transferred over to the wood shop where I actually trace these patterns over and over again on which areas I want to cut out of the board. And you can kind of see a grouping of them over here. So every design down to the smallest is drawn to scale and then it comes in here to come to life. And that's where these boxes and boxes of the smaller parts start to come together. And you can kind of see they still live here. I think I have some boards still from the very first batches of the days back in 2010, 11 from Backdoor, which is pretty great. So Tara, we got a question coming in. Yes. Um, from Diana with a private message. So sorry, we're going to see it, but um, she loves the recipe box archive, um, handwritten classic. I wonder if she has a backup digital scan of each card just in case. Not yet. So I was presented with that idea in 2019. So that is next on the agenda. Yep. And anybody else have questions about anything Tara's just showed you in the studio? That was awesome. What a fun, you, you're, it's all very organized. I love it. I love all the drawings. I, I started doing that. Um, I decided to challenge myself to come up with a production line and that's what I did in quarantine. And um, so similar to you, right? Where everything's like written out and the measurements and I found it really helpful. Um, so yeah, I just love how you have that whole system. It definitely about two years ago, I had a studio assistant. Um, well, I'm sorry, she's been gone for a year and a half now with COVID, but she was with me for three years. First and only assistant I've ever had. And one of the things she was really helpful and just a studio angel about she was like, in order for me to help you, I need you to be very clear on what you need me to do. And all these designs had been in my head. I didn't have things written down. I had notes kind of scattered all over the place. So for two years, she and I diligently met over and over again outside of just the fabrication time in the studio. And we documented and archived every design to scale down to the 16th of a change. And we definitely went over everything more than once so that by the two year mark, every design had been archived, not only just in the findings recipe form, but in a hand-drawn maquette form and a grid paper form that go into the archival books and then just down to like any type of miscellaneous measurements. Nice. So I continually call her my studio angel because she is one of those rare people that can come in and create systems out of systems to make them better. Nice. So Tara, I'm very grateful for that. Um, we have a bunch of questions that came in, but we're also getting feedback. So I'm thinking on your computer, Maybe you didn't hit like mute on the actual computer sound. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah, I'll do that. Let's try that. I think that's. Is I that better? That, yes. Okay. So sorry, everyone. <laughs> we were trying to figure that out. And I didn't want to interrupt Tara um, earlier, but okay. So let me ask you some of these questions that came in. So Kathy Stevens is asking, do you, do people send you their broken skateboards as well? Yes. Can you hear that? Yes. We hear you okay, great. Good. Now. 
I just want to make sure you could hear me. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I do. So I've had a couple of clients at actual craft shows where they would actually bring me the board because I was in town. And so they would be like, hey, you know, are you going to be there? And I'll be like, yes. And so I've had some clients do that. I've also had some um, clients. I've had uh, one client, particularly recently last year out of Florida, Vicki, she mailed me all of her son's skateboards that were in her uh, garage. Oh. So I definitely have had things come through in various different ways. That's awesome. Um, so Bonnie Skorsky is asking, do the patterns on the skateboards influence design or do you do the design first, then look for pieces of skateboard that will work for the design? Could you repeat that one more time? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. Um, and I can probably better ask. So she's asking if your um the skateboard patterns are influencing your design, or are you designing first and then going into your collection and finding the skateboards that are gonna work for the design that you got have it. In mind? Got it. Okay. So typically when I design, I come up. I, the way my design process works is I always doodle. I'm sure many people, I am not a formal renderer in the regard of like uh, getting it right the first go around. Um, I just doodle ideas. And then once I get the ideas of where the inspiration comes and it can be informed and inspired by shape, form and function or by literal colors that I see around. Um, those are my two main sources and structures, architectural, architectural structures. And so usually um, yeah, I'll just sketch. And then once I get a sketch down that I actually want to push forward, that I want to actually then engineer out is what I call it. Then I'll sit down and I'll render that on, on my graph paper and I'll get it to scale. And then what I'll do is I will figure out if I want to be more graphic with the piece, or if I want to be more subdued with the piece. But usually I just love going into the wood shop and just picking boards that resonate with me at that moment. And then, for example, on my addition work, if I've made an addition piece like this collette that I'm wearing, I'll know that I want a very graphic one and then maybe I want a very subdued one or I might want then one that's a primary color scheme or I want one that's more of like spring pinks like what's happening right now in spring greens. So I think it's more of like um, a conversation versus um, one does the work and the other doesn't. So I think the design and the skateboards have this very um, beautiful harmonious mental relationship with me as well as with each other. I hope that answers that. I think so. Um, and, and, if, and if it doesn't, Bonnie, you can ask a follow-up question. Um, Susan Richter O'Connell is asking if you have venting over your soldering station. Do, oh, yes, I do. I have a uh, case fume extractor. You can, let me flip the camera around. And I know this because Susan and I were actually in a conversation with a bunch of jewelers recently, and we were talking about vents. So <laughs> it's very on topic. Okay, here we go. So you can kind of see here, oh, this nice. is my vent, and it comes down into a fume extractor down here. And then that way, um, and it articulates out. So it comes down and That's can come nice. straight over. Kind of give you a better angle. Yeah. Right. So if I'm sitting, you know, here, I can bring it really low. And these have the vent openers on them here. Um, for a very long time, I had a fan system in the window. You can see right there. And it really frustrated me that I couldn't find something that could fit in this small area. And so when I was on a visit, to Stacy Lee Weber's studio in Pittsburgh, I'm at Philadelphia. I was very excited to see this architect, this architectural and simple uh, hose system because it could be tucked away. You could actually just tuck it away. And so that's kind of what sold me on that. And then I just went on eBay and I found this fume extractor and the charcoal filter inside actually doesn't have to be changed but every one to five years, depending on your um, amount of work. Nice. I'm super jealous of that because I just made a makeshift one with like ducks and like 
goes out the window and I will oh, aspire no. to have I one had, like that one day. I had a window, like the box and the door, like, and before that, I just had an open air room. Like I was basically in a garage that the doors were open all the time. Mm -hmm. So when I hunted this down, I got this hose system from, um, this is an, it's called the Alcident system. It's actually a scientific lab system. And so these are scientific tubes. You can actually get them on eBay. I got this particular one uh, from, oh gosh, Heiko, Heiko, H-A-K-K-O. And then the Pace extractor I got off of eBay. And there's tons of them on there. Um, they're just a fume extractor. Nice. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so we've got, you, you might want to sit down for this question from Cynthia, or maybe I'll come back to it. Um, because it's a little, um, but, um, to go yeah. back, Kathy had I'll a follow-up question bench. about, yeah, there you go. Then, then we can ask, then I can keep an order and I won't miss anyone. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Cynthia wants to know what steps did you take to leave corporate life? Yes. So, um, it actually was one of those things where I didn't really have a, a choice. I got very sick. I was in um, restaurant management, event planning, and I was an event planner for wedding planner, event planner, restaurant, fine dining for about 11 years. And basically I had um, got shingles when I was 32 and I got extremely sick. And my doctor was like, you're under too much stress. The year before I had passed out on a job site from exhaustion and and also the other thing that was happening was it was a time when I was realizing I was compromising my moral gauges for certain echelons of income and in society that I wasn't comfortable with. And so I just finally in tears one day was like, I just can't do this anymore. And it was a beloved family that I worked for and they had taught me everything that I knew. So it was really like leaving my family in a lot of ways, um, but it had just become too much. And basically I resigned and uh, kind of wandered for a minute. And then I um, had always bartended. I bartended part-time. I had, you know, all since I was old enough, since I was 20. And so I just continued bartending full-time. And in at that time, I was really frustrated that I had never finished college. And so I was living in Greenville, North Carolina, like I had mentioned, and East Carolina was there. And I had started at East Carolina back in the early 90s. And so I was like, I'm just going to go back to school. I'm going to take one class. And if I do well on this one class, then I'll take a second class. And during that time, funny story, Bob Ebendorf was my neighbor, um, like a street over. But I only knew him as Bobby. And Alita. I had no idea what he did. I had no, he never talked about his job. He never talked about jewelry, nothing but his daughter, cooking, and his yard. And so as time passed, I went into art school and I basically was talking with an advisor. I knew I wanted to go back to school. I wanted to work with my hands because I had been an event planner, creating events, weddings, bar and bat mitfas, you know, creating like experiences for people. So I worked with my hands a lot. And I was very creative as a child. Um, I worked with my father in his workshop too as a young girl. And so I knew I wanted to work with my hands. And so she basically told me that day, you can either go to fashion design school, restaurant management, because you've done that school, or you could go to art school. And I was like, What's, which one can I work with my hands? And she was like, well, you probably might want to try business uh fashion design school because they draw but they don't work with their hands I was like no I really want something tactile and she was like we well, go to art school but it's really hard and I was like what do, you, what do you mean and she was like well you could take a business uh, fa fashion class for 50 minutes or you could take an art studio class for three hours but it's the same credit <laughs> so I decided to take the hard road I was like oh I could do that you know like I'm gonna try and I'd never taken art classes ever and so I decided to take the long road and that's when I discovered who Bob was and um, make a long story short, uh, when I decided to submit to jewelries and metal, uh, Bob, Bob was so funny. Bob would never talk to me in the, in the neighborhood anymore. He, he acted like he didn't know who I was. 
you know, and uh, I had been in the hallway one day and I had talked to a recent uh, professor and I said, excuse me, do you know where I could find Bobby? And they're like, who is that? And I was like, you know, he has white hair. He wears a cowboy hat and he always wears these crazy suspenders. You know, he's real fun. And she was like, do you mean Professor Ebendorf? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And she was like, do they know you call him Bobby? And I was like, yeah. And so that day I went to the library and I Googled Bob. And that's when I discovered who he was and what he does and, and the amazing man that we all know who he is today. And, and then as I pursued and submitted to get into jewelry and design, after I had gotten accepted, he walked up to me and said, okay, I can talk, we can talk jewelry now. He was like, let's go. And so um, Bob has been such a metals father and a mentor in my life for a very long time. And anybody that doesn't know Bob Evendorf, Google him, Robert Evendorf. Um, he's an awesome jeweler. So please look him up. Um, <clears throat> I love that story. <laughs> um, okay, Kathy has a question. Yes. Um, a follow-up from the skateboards. Has anyone ever sent you a skateboard and asked you if you could make them a commemorative piece from it? No, it's a funny thing with the boards. Um, when I first started getting boards, I would always be so grateful that I even was receiving one. I would always say, can I make you anything? I would love to like, you know, give you something in return. And everybody consistently would say, I just want you to make something cool. Could you just make something great? Just, you know, do something cool with it. And I got that answer over and over again. And so, you know, I started wanting to know how I could actually give back to the people that were giving me such precious, precious objects, because these skateboards are just as precious as any other family heirloom that we have, because they have the memories that hold the time and the place that this individual may have gotten their first, you know, freedom to leave the house on their own. They bought their first board with their money. They were able to learn a new trick with the support of their friends around or just on their own through diligence of doing it over and over and over again, just like I solder all the time to get better and better. You know, so these boards and, and being able to thank these people became really um, important to me. And so, cause the very first time that I ever received boards was when I was working on a project at, at my university and one of the guys at the skate shop had, fa I managed a tattoo shop a couple doors down and he had found out that I was working on this project and he had brought me every skateboard that had ever been kept at his mother's house in a paper bag. And I was like, Warren, thank you so much. He was like, yeah, just do something cool. And I had become so, um, really interested in this material because the people that I knew who revered these objects like human beings were just so connected to them and it became very important to understand why and not only to give back. And so I interviewed about 13 skateboarders and I was able to ask them a series of questions as to why they skate, why was it important to them, why was it part of their life? And um, they continually answered the question with, um, because I don't want to pollute the air. I, I want to have a sustainable living. I want to stay healthy. I want to be get my exercise in. Um, it's like my religion. It's basically how I breathe. And I started getting these answers and these answers reaffirmed what I had forgotten about myself in corporate. And so it became more important to give back. And so now uh, through the years, as I've been getting boxes of boards from these skate shops, I always buy boards to give back. And so how that works is if you ever have a, a child or if you skate yourself, you know that there's what's called a free box in every skate shop. And you can actually go and pick up a board. So say like you broke your board while you were riding or, you know, like you cracked it or, or something happened. You can always go to the free box and you can get a box so you can continue your riding session. If uh, you, and so what I do is I buy like several boards and I just give back to my community and they use those boards to give to someone that may not be able to afford a board or may not be able to like, or they, or just because they may have like learned something that was super rad and they want to, you know, help support them and give them that like extra push that they need, you know, within their skating community. And so it's just something that I quietly do and it, and it helps me to be able to give back since everybody has been so gracious, not even asking for anything back or accepting it. 
I love that. I love, it's so interesting to hear you talk about it because I work with um, recycled tin. And so there's a lot of similarities as far as like with that process of the graphics and where you're cutting things out and all of that. But I love this idea that like the skateboards just have that person, so much more of that personal connection and history mm -hmm. and how like they've got those parts where they're worn because they, they've been used and like mm -hmm. just the whole story, I think just adds such a deep richness to the work that is so unique. Well, you know, this is the hallmark. So all the, all the parts on the board itself, you can actually see here, like this is what I'm trying to preserve. All of these different like areas mm -hmm. because no two board is the same. Even though this is a pair of earrings, they're very different because you'll never get that scratch and wear the same on any other part, even on the smallest cufflinks. You know, like when you start looking at it, they just have their own personality. Yeah, so and so like, like I said, like when you're selecting, it, yeah, it's like that scratch that wear becomes part of that compositional aspect that you want to like include to tell that story, like to you like intentionally want it there, right? To right, right. make that awareness never, of that connection. Correct. I never ever alter any of the surfaces ever. Yeah. Um, and Kathy was also asking, do you skateboard? So as a kid, I definitely skateboarded and it was because I had a crush on a boy. And, um, and I also went from skateboarding to bi bike riding. I had a BMX bike, a regular bike, and then I moved on to other sports. So I was really active as a kid and, you know, and I haven't skateboarded in years. And so when I actually found this material, it made me, you know, really start to see it from an adult lens mm -hmm. because I only saw it from a child's lens. And so it just became this whole other beautiful layer of my story with skateboarding. I love that. Um, all right. So I do want to go back up in the chat because I know there's so much coming in. Um, and we did, which we can come back to, but we did put a link. Um, we have a collection of Tara's work um, available through the gallery and we're offering 10% off, just not, not just on her work, but on your entire order with um, this code. So scroll up in the chat to find that. And she's going to show us some of that work um, in a little bit and some of her um, other, her new um, pieces that she just launched. Um, but we did get Judy Neugebauer says uh -huh. um, at the dirty area. So I guess back um, from your studio tour at the yeah. dirty area, you had a shape that you use for patina and other processes holds three liquids. What do you yes. do there? And where yes. did you get that? Do you, uh, and do you oxidize with liver of sulfur? Yes. So this is my, uh, you know, after everything gets soldered, it comes over here to the pickle. So this is actually a fondue pot. I got it for $35 oh, nice. at Walmart. Um, they're all one quart. I've had it literally since 2010. And um, this has my silver pickle. This has my stainless and silver pickle. And this is my liver of sulfur. And so it's really great because I can just monitor them. They have individual knobs and I can, you know, use whichever one I am. And then this is my, um, why, so it comes out of the pickle. I had, and uh, it never, once it hits the pickle, obviously it never hits my hands. It goes straight into the, um, can't even talk, bacon, bacon powder water bath. Then it goes into a clean water bath. And then it goes into the tumbler with its media. And so, um, yeah, and I do use liver of sulfur. So I just use the standard rocks. This is what I actually prefer. I have used the liquid, which I, I, I just do not care for it. It doesn't do the same as this. I, I get consistent results. Um, and I make a fresh batch every single time, usually an hour before I get ready to liver of sulfur. So it's very, very fresh and very hot. And um, Judy's, about, Judy's asking, how do you vent the liver of self, sulfur smell? Oh, so when I'm venting, I actually open up the windows and I actually open up the door. So mm. I have, that's the second ventilation system that will be coming, will be for over here. Yep. I love that. I just got a second. I, I wish I had seen that first because I just got a second um, pickle pot because I was using like 
right steel and then I need one for silver and I was changing them and I was like I'm just gonna right. get another one but right that's so smart um yeah I do use that liver of silver I just had that you didn't like but I've I've had luck with that actually um if anybody does have it yeah I think it's my description I could be wrong though right but everyone's got their I think you know everybody has their um you know, like I tell people when, when I'm teaching a workshop, you know, there are multiple ways to do something. And that's why I'm always like, please try everything to figure out what mm -hmm. you like, because what works for me may not work for you. And like also too, when you're, when you're doing liver of sulfur, I think it also is a matter of um, result is it hits the pickle and then it goes straight into the liver of sulfur I never take the pickle off so like everybody's you know and then I tumble a patina so then it just does an overnight mm. tumble and so I feel and that's because I don't I'm not um I'm mounting everything like a pearl so like everything actually gets mounted into the wood so I have that opportunity of being able to just tumble it and like leave it so I think if you're doing settings, um, I've seen some students who want to get that beautiful brush finish, like with the brass. Brush. So everybody, you know, it's very different. I think, I think that's what's beautiful about liver yeah. of sulfur, I think, is you could do so many things with it. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's so interesting, right? Because I have a totally different process, right? And I'm, I do use like a brass brush with the layers and it is a yeah. different look, right? And that's, right. that's what's so great with all of these materials. I think you can just, everybody finds that way that has that aesthetic or the process or whatever works yes. for them. Um, I totally agree. And I love, I love for everybody to embrace how it works for them because then yeah. once you get a system that works for you, then you get really charged, right? You're very excited. And so then you're like, Oh, that works. I like how that looks, you know? And so, yes. you know, that's why I'm always like, try everything. For sure. Um, Joe Shields is asking, do you make uh, young men's jewelry? I do not see my jewelry as having um, any type of gender basis. So like I have clients um, of all body types that wear the work. And so um, it just depends on what you want to wear it for and where you want to wear it to. So I do all scale and sizes to accommodate all body shapes. Nice. Um, and Carol Jones is asking, have you applied to the PMA craft show? And I'm not sure if she's asking for this year or in the past, but I know Tara's done that show because that is where I met Tara um, first when we were exhibiting there. Yeah. So, um, correct. And then Deborah is asking, can you tell us something about the construction of a sta skateboard? Also, yeah. can some of your, also, can you, some of your jewelry, maybe she's asking a show. Um, I'd love to. I love what you're wearing and would like to see more. Yes. So yes, Tara's definitely going to show us um, many more yes. pieces of her jewelry, but yeah. Um, yeah. Can you tell us about the construction of a skateboard? Yeah. So skateboards are usually made out of Canadian maple. Um, and so there's seven layers of maple veneer. Uh, let me pull one up and, and you can see it actually. It'll be a lot easier to have a, a sample. So if you, can you see that? Yeah. If you count these layers, there's seven layers of uh, wood veneer. And these are all individually dyed by whichever skate company has made this deck. And so usually they're aniline dyes. Everything is a water soluble glue. So then they're uh, laminated and then and made into their process and formed at the actual uh, manufacturer. That's so cool. Cause I love that, like, right. That subtlety of like that the colors yeah. in the layers so it's not just yeah. about the graphics on top but then you've got that additional element right if you and here i'll show you this other board give you an example of how different they can be like this skateboard has seven layers of colored laminate this skateboard has only one layer in the middle hmm. and you know what's really cool is that the so color and color lamination, the graphic community within skateboarding, those are cultures within its own culture. And so that has a huge following in and of itself. It's like a huge, and I follow a lot of the graffiti artists and graphic artists that work in that industry because that's another passion of mine is street art. And so that's, it's a, a whole nother genre. That's awesome. Um, well, Crystal Harmon says, three cheers for the give back, Tara. Skateboarding oh, is an you. amazing door to conversation and travel opportunities. 
live art and presence in living. Um, and let's see, what else do we get? Um, Susan Richter O'Connell says, do you cement your findings into the wood? Yes, so everything is epoxy set. And I actually will show you the epoxy I use. Trish, Trish Path is online today. And so she's seen this before. So Trish will recognize this. Mm -hmm. So this is the, I use what's called System 3. Some people may already know who it is. It's called Quick Cure. Um, it sets in five minutes and cures in 24. And it's amazing. I have used it literally for, I've been making my jewelry for professionally for eight years. I've been using it for six. Um, and when I first started out and I, and I am such a glue nerd, um, you know, I was using an acrylite, which was, um, a super glue, but it was a, a very, um, high quality. I cannot, the name is leaving me right now. Uh, Zappagap. I used to use Zappagap and um, I learned Zappagap through a wood inlay and woodworking class that I took with Dan DiCaprio, a mutual, a mutual East Carolinian and a very dear friend. And, you know, I went down the rabbit hole of glue because one of the things that I was noticing was when I would mount all of my findings in like these cufflinks, um, the Zappagap was breaking if I like the, the, the um, bond. And I didn't realize that acrylite was more of a, um, had zero flexibility, right? And so that was one of the things that I had to learn on my own through trial and error. And so then when I started working with this epoxy, I, um, which I always tell people, please, 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 if you're working with the epoxy, make sure you have a mask, a respirator, something to protect yourself. Um, you know, it became a game changer because I could then really understand the flexibility of it. So everything is epoxy set because it is flexible. And so um, I very, I think I've over the past six years, maybe had three remounts that I've ever had to do. And which is an testament to itself. And I do what's called pin gluing uh, as a system. I, I just named myself. I have a, a vice and I put a, a pin in the end. And then I just use these little pieces of paper. And so I wick the glue up and I just pack it in the little holes. Nice. And I do something similar, but I, I do a lot of sewing. So I actually use straight pins. Yeah, but these I, are straight like, pins. These yeah, exactly. Pins. Yep. And I just I like that. the pin vice because it gives me, you know, a, a lot more. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's definitely I, a step up from what I'm using. Oh. Well, I was using just the pen and then I noticed the cramping in my finger. <laughs> yeah. And so then I was like, oh, wait, I have this pen vice. And so, you know, I feel like when you're working with a non-traditional material, you use a lot of um, material like metal smithing tools for non-metal smithing things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really love that learning how to do one thing opens the gate of how you can actually manipulate your mind to use those process and other things. And so it's become this really like fun um, side effect of my practice. For sure. Um, okay, Liz Reed um, says, you mentioned that you focus on preserving the design from the skateboard deck. Do you ever focus your designs on the effects created from layering boards? Um, you know, I just recently, now that you mentioned that I have created my first design where I've done that. And I had uh, created what's called a cuff bracelet about two and a half years ago. And so this is a cuff bracelet. It just slides on the arm. You can kind of see that and they sit down pretty low. And so I love the fact that it was just a very simple no metal, you know, in it. I wanted something very minimal. And so then I actually decided um, I had a, I usually have all of my ideas in the shower mm -hmm. or like late at night yeah. when I like <laughs> laying in bed. And so I had this idea. I was like, wow, I really want a cuff bracelet. I really want something I can wear in the summer that like just stick on my arm. I love t-shirts and tank tops, but I, and I also wanted something simple. And so I decided to laminate them and you can kind of see. And so this is a brand new cuff that came out last year. And so, and it has my hallmark in the middle. Nice. And, and I love these because again, they just slide on and they just sit nice and low. 
and they come in, in two sizes, size one and two. And it just depends on what whatever size your wrist is. So I'm really excited about those. That's awesome. Um, okay, so Carol did clarify. She was asking if you've applied for the 2021 PMA Craft Show. Yes. Um, Maggie Fuller says, um, hi, Maggie. She appreciates you talking about the importance of your mental health in leaving the event planning world. Are you able to focus on creating your jewelry full-time now, even in the pandemic? Would you have made the same decision? Yes. Yeah, so I have been making my jewelry full-time professionally for eight years. I just celebrated my eight year this eight year this year. And um, I tell people all the time that I was just speaking with someone about this. It was probably the best decision I ever made. And it's because a lot of the times when you do corporate work, um, I was young, I was very young, I was 21. And I was in management at a very young age. Um, I was really growing up myself, becoming a young adult myself. And I made a lot of mistakes. And I learned some of some strengths that I never knew I had. And I think it was the best experience I could ever ask for. Um, also, it was some of the saddest and hardest times I've ever asked for, which made me a better woman today. And I tell people all the time that if you don't try something, you'll never know. And also, the other thing is I learned more about myself in that 11 years and then have learned a whole nother side of myself because I left. And if I hadn't done either, I don't think I would be who I am and continuing to grow into the woman that I am. And so I definitely say yes. I'm very thankful for both of my paths um, because the same thing in my jewelry career, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done and continue to do. And it is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done and also continues to inspire me way beyond I, I just never knew was possible. And so it's such a beautiful community and like just the kindness of people in the craft community. Um, also some of the hardest and challenging conversations, but also some very rewarding conversations. So I think both have had their, their play uh, for me equally. And now with my career in jewelry, I definitely can say, even through the pandemic, which we all know is one of the hardest things that we endured last year and are continuing to endure today. And, and also with the plight of just everything going on in our social structure with everything from George Floyd to everything happening in Atlanta, my jewelry has helped me stay grounded in a way that I didn't know I, I, it, it would, it would, I guess, because, you know, during the pandemic and those that have done craft shows and those that understand, I have, was getting ready for a full year of craft shows. And I'll never forget the week I got the call um, and that everything had been canceled. And, you know, I think I went into what's called the dark mode where everything just shut down and I didn't know what to do with myself. And I had this frustration and anger because it was like email after email after email of cancellations. And then the second thing was, if I didn't have this yard, which I'm very grateful for, and it's such a privilege during this time to be home, to work in the yard and learn a new skill set of yard like gardening. But then also too, the amount of guilt I had looking at my studio every day and it was asking me to come to work. And I'm like, what for? I don't know what I'm making and I don't know if I have a business. And so it really started to have this conversation more about like, what is my business even if without a craft show? And so, you know, even throughout the pandemic, it pushed me to create differently. It pushed me to uh, produce financially in a different way, how to gain economy, you know, virtually, um, like doing events like this, as well as, um, you know, creating an online store and creating launches for my store the same way I would for a craft show. So it also, you know, had that silver lining. Um, and then also it has become a way for me to support, you know, those communities that are being, um, you know, treated and just in a, in a way that I can give back through, you know, support of, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, as well as the AAPI Association. And, you know, so it's a way for me to actually use my work as a vehicle to push forward to help also. And that's exciting because I've never done that before. Awesome. Um, 
And we do, it's almost 12 already. This has been so great. And I want to want you to show us um, work for sure. So everybody yeah. stay with us if you can. Um, Ina's asking, how do you protect the painted surfaces of your finished jewelry? Everything is oil sealed in my collection. So I use linseed oil hmm. and everything is hand sanded and then hand oiled. Nice. So yeah, show it. You want to switch? Um, yes, let me, I'll turn okay. this one off and I'm going to go over there and I'm going to cool. take these off and then I'll pull those on. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And thanks for staying with us. If anybody has to leave, um, we are going to record this and I'll send you the email. So um, fear not, you will still be able to tune in. But this has been an awesome conversation. Tara's had so much um, to share that I, I see, I see you not, I see Crystal not, <laughs> I can see some of your videos, um, but I, I'm so glad that you guys are appreciating this as much as I am. And so let's see, we're just going to switch Tara to her other. Um, we just have to wait for her to yeah, turn yeah. her video on. Yeah, <laughs> just one second while we transition. It's all good. Everybody can like do a stretch for a second. I'm going to do like a shake. <laughs> hey. All right, she's back. All right, yeah. <laughs> we'll check this one. Okay, is it is there feedback? No, no, this sounds good. Okay. Very good. Yes. Yeah, so, so show us some work. Okay. So some of the pieces that are in the store um, are some pieces that are just classics, and then some really fun colors. And so one of the things I'll put on is my favorite style earring. This is called the large gym bar. Um, this is kind of a go-to if I'm not wearing a hoop. And these have like almost like a little sheen to them. And that's just naturally the way the skateboard was made. It has like a little bit of metallic sheen in the burgundy. Mm -hmm. And I like this pair. It has a beautiful walnut wood uh, colored laminate. And so here... These are these are on the Peters Valley collection, right? Yes, they caught my eye. <laughs> so you can kind of see, and I love that they give a little coverage of the ear hole if that's something that you're concerned with. And they actually are super lightweight. Um, they move when you talk. I love that. You know, I love that they have a little bit of, you know, movement. I like that they frame the face. So there's also a right and a left. So when I design the work, it always complements the angles of your face. So this is one of my go-tos. Um, one of the other styles that also is really fun and super lightweight as well in an earring is called the G-flat stacks. And this is the Kush cord cuts. And so um, they're a lot thinner. So these are actually carved down to five layers to actually help with the weight. And the ear finding is offset a little lower so that you can actually wear it a little lower on the ear. And so you get more coverage at the top. And so you can see, and all the posts on these are stainless. And so you can kind of see, they sit up nice, they're nice and bold. You know, I love that they just have that minty green in spring, which is exactly what's in my yard right now. And so it's such a beautiful spring green color. I um, love those too, because I, I noticed those like, um on our site and just again that surface and the difference between the two and like that subtle that like those stood out really stood out to me as far as like that skateboard surface yes and have like that. super textual that's another thing I'm a very big texture person hmm. so I love that my work is tactile in that way um this is also a very similar collet. I was wearing a graduated cushion cut collet earlier. This is actually a small round cut collet. They're reversible. So this has a beautiful matte blue on the back. And then this one is actually gonna have the graphics. You can kind of see it. it's got the grays, the blacks and the blue on the nice. front. And so this one, someone just asked, I think Arlene did. Prices, yeah. Yeah. And so then this one actually goes on. It's, it's kind of my idea of a string of pearls. And I love it because like I'm just wearing a t-shirt and, you know, like you can just dress up a t-shirt. You can wear it with like a sweatshirt. You can wear it under a hoodie. I've done that. They're really fun. So, you know, they're just really simple on the strand. And, and so this one's actually in the shop as well. Yeah, that one, um, Arlie, that one is 350 The um, G flat um, posts that she showed us are 140 and those original burgundy gem bars are 110 
And those three pieces are uh, on that gallery collection and we can put another link. Um, it, okay, she just reposted it, great. And this is actually uh, one of my newest brooch styles. This is a really nice and simple one. I love the graphics on this one. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see a little bit of the curve. So this was cut from the, uh, the tail of the board itself. You can actually see the curve and it's a double pin. Um, I use the push liggers, you know, they're just really easy to push in and pull out. And um, these are light. So what's really nice about my brooches is the fact that you can wear them on a t-shirt. They don't pull, you know, they're, the wood is so lightweight, mm -hmm. which is really nice about maple and it has a very minimal uh, metal in it. So, you know, sterling silver is actually what is the most heavy. Um, I wear my brooches in the middle because I have long hair and my hair gets in the way. And so I like to wear things in the middle and um you can kind of see so like it just sits nice and you know not it sits up and so you'll be able to wear it on a coat you can wear it on a t-shirt you can wear it on a pocket so randy you should get that brooch it's only 50 dollars. so snatch it up before someone else does and so these are really fun randy's know? asking what size wrists are the one and two bracelets yes. so size one is a six inch circumference on the inside so I always highly recommend, you wanna measure on my cuffs, this part of your wrist, right below the bone, right below your wrist bone. Just take a piece of paper, piece of paper, piece of string, you know, like measure whatever this is. If you're a six, then that six will fit you because it's like a six and an eight. Mm -hmm. and, then it, and then if you are like, say like a seven, seven and a half, you're gonna want size two. And so, you know, uh, I don't have any size twos on the shop right now. That's the next round. I just have size uh, one. And the other thing is they can also be carved out. So like, say like you order one and you need to have it like just carved out a little bit. The nice thing is, is I can remove the hallmark, sand it out a little bit to give you a little more wiggle room. So they're really workable. Um, speaking of bracelets, I love the bracelet you have in your store right now. And this is the yes. journey. I love that. I love this bracelet. <laughs> I love the graphics. You know, and this one's actually really tight. These are stickers that were left on from the writer. And all of the hinges are double hinged sterling silver. So they articulate really nice when they're on. And this has a just a standard clasp. And so, and they're reversible. So you can wear it either way that you like. And I will put this one on. I always do it backwards. So I, I'm putting it on myself like this. Isn't it fun to be able to have a reason to try on jewelry right now? <laughs> you're right, you're probably like sick of doing it at shows and now you're like, yes, an excuse. <laughs> well, it's nice because these shows are really intimate and I get to mm -hmm. meet new faces, you know, and I just really love that. And it's like, I get to like, um, you know, just meet people. And that's the one thing that's a value to me at a craft show is seeing everybody's face, meeting people, you know, and also just doing jewelry dress up, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I don't care if you have on t-shirt and jeans, if you have on a sweatshirt, that's my daily go-to, you know? And so I just love that jewelry doesn't have to be just for fancy occasions, mm -hmm. you know? And well, and I think your jewelry too, you, it's like, it's so versatile, right? You can totally dress it up and you can dress it down. It, it's just... Mm -hmm really yeah, versatile and, I, and it, it that's exactly who i am you know coming from yeah. corporate wearing a suit and heels every day mm -hmm. you know and then knowing that i had to put on my face every day i stopped wearing makeup when i was 25 you mm -hmm. know i was just like and i, I put some on for y'all today <laughs> but you know like it's nice because that makeup has become also kind of like jewelry you know yeah. it's a way to dress up to play you know get get ready um and it's fun you know the i i do have a really nice pair of cufflinks in your shop right now yeah um, the cufflinks are great because, um, you know, they are just a really simple and they're matte. And a lot of people that mm -hmm. wear cufflinks like that. They like that they're not super shiny and they stand out. And you can actually just start pairing things with the laminate. These have a really pretty oxblood. So mm -hmm. I think these would look great on a shirt that's like chambray. If you had a shirt that's like a beautiful army green, mm -hmm. like I think these would look really nice with that. And then another thing that you have in your store is a signature classic of mine, which are the arc hoops. Mm -hmm. And so, and these are a beautiful nice. orange color. And they, these uh, ear wires are made out of stainless and all the ear findings on the bottom are sterling. And it's great for Zoom. 
that pop of color, right? Yeah. So what's nice about the stainless is um, I actually had a, a really beautiful story. I had I had a young girl. Um, she had worn cheap earrings as a as a child, mm -hmm. and she had created an ear infection, and she couldn't wear uh, precious metals. Anything that was, I'm sorry, she couldn't wear um, anything but gold is what she mm -hmm. thought. And so I was like, if you just met me. If you trust me, I was like, I have alcohol wipes. Would you like to try this stainless on? She was like, I don't know. Our stainless hyperallergenic. It's medical grade. It's fine for your body. And sure enough, she bought them. And I met, and she messaged me later on. It was the first time she'd been able to wear earrings since she was a kid. And I actually teared up a little bit because I was like, you know, it's just a matter of, and I can't put this on because you're watching. Um, you know, it's just a matter of trying. And so the hoops are just really weightless. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. And they move. I like movement. Movement to me um, is very important in my work because my work is very structured because it's wood. And so I like the fact that creating movement within it, mm -hmm. regardless if it's kinetic, uh, I just like the forms to move. So movement has become more and more an exploration in my work. Do you want me to keep trying things on? Sure. Okay. Um, I saw a couple sales come in. So if you guys got oh, your eye on anything, you got to like simultaneously watch and shop. So this is um, a really nice summer design. So these are the gym pendants. Um, this one, nice. and they're reversible as well, like all of my work. And so, and you have, like I call it the nighttime nice. and the daytime, which is really nice. And it's an oxidized uh, sterling silver chain with a clasp. But what's nice about this clasp is this chain, because it's an open link, you can actually shorten it. So mm. if you wanted to shorten this, you can. Nice. Right? But it's standard wise, it's a 26. You just throw it over. I'm sorry, a 36. And see, like with something like this, it's just really like, I call, I call it just a throw on and go. Nice. Then if you wanted to shorten the class, then you would just bring it on up, which is really fun. And you actually have this in, in your store right now. You have these two colorways. And so this is a beautiful orange laminate with teal on the back and royal blue and gray on the front. Sweet. So those are the two you have right now. And if you watch it, the movement on this one is really fun. The way it cantilevers. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of I had a lot of fun when I created that one. And let's see. Oh, and you also have another fun design, which is the stud earrings. The gem studs are classic. They're one of part of the signature Pop Rocks collection, which most of the work that you have is. And the studs are nice because they're an architectural carve. It just kind of sits up nice on the ear and they're really light. And so again, um, the posts on these are, oops, I just dropped it, stainless. Mm. Mm. And I actually make my posts a half inch in length because if you're like me and you have thicker earlobes, it's nice to have a little bit of cushion. Um, and so you can kind of see they just sit up nice. And these are a really pretty forest green. Mm. Um, and I use a 13 millimeter back. So they're really wide and they cover lots of ear coverage. So it gives you a lot more support on the ear. Nice. And even with my hair, you can kind of still see them. You know, it's nice because they stand out a little bit. Okay, cool. And, oh, I don't want to leave this one out. Last but least. Oh, you yeah. have what's called the arc necklace. This one's really a cool graphic. You can kind of see the, this was a screen print that was a painter splatter. So it's like a graphic within a graphic, which is really cool. And then you have the texture of it being written. This also has a gray, a triple laminate. You can kind of see that it goes all the way through. And then the back is this beautiful yellow. Mm. You can actually see the wood grain. The cords on these are leather. So it's a very soft, nice. supple leather and the sterling silver class. And then it just, you can hook it. Uh, it's a really simple S hook and you can kind of see the length. 
And again, these are nice. Like if you wear, I have a couple of clients that are wear a lot of button downs. And so they're able to wear this under their button mm. down. Um, you can wear it um, under a scarf. I have a lot of clients up in the Midwest that obviously scarves are part of their daily attire. And so it's nice because it's a good length for that. And then in the summer, I just like these because I usually wear like um, uh, lower necks or like a very austere tank top. And so it gives me a little something extra. Nice. Yeah, I love that piece. I just love the green. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, and if you're having, like some people are always like, I don't like, you know, doing, I'm like, just flip it around, just put it on like this. And then you can actually see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And it's just an S hook. Nice. You're not going to hurt the work. I tell people that all the time. <laughs> I was like, it's pretty, pretty indestructible. So and it, but that's what's great about it. It's pretty, it's like lightweight, right? Even on those big pieces, wood isn't that heavy. No, wood is only heavy based on a lot of like structural construction. Like I have a cutting board that's two by two squares that are laminated together and it's extremely dense and heavy because mm -hmm. it's walnut. Right. You know, a lot of the boards are made out of lighter woods. And so it's really nice because, um, you know, you can, when you start carving away, one of the things I talk a lot about when I'm teaching workshops is, you know, your findings, um, like conscious connections, right? Like, mm -hmm. so my findings are in the background. So they are secondary and the material is primary. And so therefore they are very minimal in, in themselves. I also patina them to, to make them darker to kind of fall to the back. So that way the material stands in the front, but they're still supporting subject matters. And so that way the wood really carries the weight, which makes it light. Mm -hmm. If you were to have a, a necklace or earrings that were mainly sterling silver or gold, you know, gold is lighter than sterling, you know, like you definitely run into those issues of balance and weight. And so um, when I was talking about movement earlier, a lot of that movement and weight was really figured out and how it, how it moves on your body. Mm -hmm. Gravity is a, a big, um, play in, in my world. And so I have a mannequin. I work on my husband who is 285 and like broad, you know, I work on like my mom who was five foot and very small, you know? So it's like, I try to work with body types to really see how it's going to be. Cause I, no one is going to have my body type, right? You know, I can't make things to fit me. So yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Keep showing. You want to show some of your new. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you some of the new. Pieces. And I know like Trish, you've got to leave. I'm sorry. that Everyone doesn't want to leave, but you can still tune in. Like I said, we'll send you the email. Um, um, so one of the pieces that I just finished um, are, these are called the extra large hoops. And these are actually, you probably know they're my favorite. I wear these a lot in the summer and they're reversible. So you wear either side that you like on your ear. Mm -hmm. And so basically, if you want the graphic side, you put that in first. If you want the yellow side, you put that in first. And so these, they're all hallmarked. So all of my work is hallmarked. And um, the, the posts on these are stainless. And what's nice about these is they weigh nothing. And because they're a post, they don't pull. And so they just have a lot of attitude, and I love that. Um, I love sass. I swear I'm going to go down with that on uh, that as my saying <laughs> on, on papers everywhere. Um, a lot of sass with this one is what they'll say, you know? But I just feel like you put on some hoops and you're just like, yes, mm -hmm. you know, I love that. Um, it makes you automatically want to dance. Yeah, you look like you're like, I'm ready to have fun, right? Yeah. Like that's what those yeah. earrings say to me. Yeah. Like and they're super light. They weigh, like, I mean, like, they don't weigh anything. They're like so mm -hmm. lightweight. Um, the other pair that's, that's just released, um, the I restocked are the triple gym dangles. I remember seeing those on your studio tour of your, right? Your templates, I think. Yeah. They just got yeah. finished cutting these. And so I use a faceted, uh, faceted, uh, French hook. I, this is one of my first designs that I have been mm -hmm. finessing and, and reestablishing and, and just baking better and better. These are stainless. And so I make them with a little bit of a leader, right? Mm -hmm. It goes in like a post and down like a French hook. 
And the nice thing about the kickback is, is they don't push out of your ear. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my clients um, don't wear backs with these. You just slide it in like a post and then down and then it goes in. And you know, these are great because they also are super light. They're a longer earring. I have a short neck. So these are about um, three inches, two and three quarters. And so um, I do make them in a teardrop and they're about three and a half inches. And I will be making them in a five, like as a neck duster. So it'll be really fun, but they're super lightweight. And you can kind of see, I try to measure the drop from the ear so that it just crests right under the earlobe. So it complements, again, your ear, your face. So it gives you a nice form and function. And, you and just, I, Maggie's saying that, uh, Maggie Fuller saying that she loves those. And Maggie has really like thick curly hair. So yeah. I imagine those would really like pop well. On, yeah, I on tell a lot of the ladies that have a lot of hair, a lot of volume, you know, like you want something that's going to actually like compliment you. And so looking at, like I always say, mm -hmm. when you're picking out my work, um, I always say, ask yourself if you're a summer, a winter, a fall or a spring. And usually that just means with your colors. So if you have natural pinks and reds in your cheeks, then you're definitely like going to be like a fall or like a really bright summer. You know, if you've got really nice, beautiful, like creamy, you know, pale skin, then you're definitely going to be like in a spring, you know, like, so I always tell people if you're very dark and you have like beautiful chocolate tones, then you're definitely going to be more in like a spring or a bold summer. So it's like, I, I always try to work with your natural tone to have you pick out a piece that really complements you you know and that way you can really wear it all the time because I think a lot of times you, you know we just I don't know I've watched people buy jewelry and, and it just sits you know and I want people to wear the work so I spent a lot of time trying to have conversations around what makes you look your best mm -hmm. because ultimately it's for you right um the, oh this this one I'm really excited about so I just restocked these crescents and this is a holographic Ooh. board. Oh, wow. So, so cool. Sometimes I get these and so, this is the only one I've ever gotten like this. And so this is a signature uh, Jim Crescent necklace. The clasp is in the front. You can see it mm -hmm. right there. And so it's nice. Again, I have long hair. I try to design things that accom accommodate that. And so, because if I'm having problems with it, I'm sure somebody else is. And it looks like you're kind of mixing this chain with the leather cord. Yeah. I like that combination a lot. So you can kind of see that. Let me get this out of my hair. See, I always get caught. <laughs> this is real life. I get caught in everything I wear. There we go. And you can kind of see that. Okay. And then this is reversible and the back is aqua. And that's fun too, because like you were saying that one and like the other yellow one, you can see the wood grain in it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's just like a flat, solid yeah. color. It's got that, that, um, yeah. I don't know if you'd call that a texture or what you'd call that. But. So this has a hot pink laminate mm -hmm. and it's got that beautiful, it's just actually the natural grain of the board, you know, that you can see through the dye. And so, and then again, this is handmade chain and leather. So it's really supple and soft. Do you know how much that this one is? We got a question. 280, it's 295. And it's in the store. And then um, the other statement piece that I just finished because the drop was called the statement drop. And this is the teardrop graduated gem collet. This one actually has a metallic burgundy. Mm. Kind of see that. Mm -hmm. It also has a pink laminate. I tried to choose colors that had a little bit of a pop of string. Um, same class, just an S class. And then this one's also reversible. And this has- How much is that? Oh, no, that was the same one, never mind. But if you know the price on that one too. <laughs> this one is $7.50. And it has the creams and the blacks and the metallic burgundy. I just love this board. And again, you can see it's just like, you throw it on with a t-shirt super fun you know like sundress in the summer i i love a little bit of a bohemian structured vibe in the summer so i love long dresses i love things that flow and i like that hard and soft combination and the back of this is bright yellow oh fun so you definitely get you know 
a, a, I call it um, party in the front, daytime in the back. You know, so it's always like whatever you're feeling is what I tell people with these. Mm -hmm. You definitely get two different vibes. And I was talking about the cuffs earlier. So I do have these cuffs. Um, you can see this is a double and this is a triple to kind of give you a size difference. So Maggie's at, she says your, Maggie says your website is fantastic and she appreciates um, photos of the work on the actual person. Do you do your own photography? I do. I do all of my own product photography as well as my own. Those are me and the photos. And so um, I work with, and that all really stemmed from the pandemic. It forced me to put myself in front of the camera show how you wear it on the body, mm -hmm. take videos of how it looks on the body. And I, I love, that's probably the one thing I love. And the only thing I love about the pandemic is it taught forced me to do things differently. Um, I, everything else can go away with it. Right. But yeah. So it's I, really well, and I think a lot of artists didn't, didn't have um, like online shops and stuff because right. We all have to be photographers of our work now. And I know we were help, we're helping our, um, artists that are doing like our virtual craft fair and showing them how to take photos and stuff. And like, I've learned it from having working here. Right. And we have an online gallery. And so I've taught myself how to do product photography, but it's like artists now, right. We're required to be business people. We're required to be photographers. We're required to be salespeople. Right. Like it really, you really need a lot of uh, different skills to be a successful professional artist. Yeah, I tell people all the time it is the hardest job because it's a lot of jobs that, and it's one job, but it's so many jobs. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, it is exhausting and rewarding all at the same time. You have such highs and lows, but a lot of times the highs always outweigh the lows. Mm -hmm. and it's just a lot of work. And, and But I really do find I love the challenge. I love learning things. I like trying to figure out how to make things work. And so that's what's really nice about that is it gives me the time to do it on my own terms. Mm -hmm. You know, also, I don't I don't make enough money all the time that I can outsource things like photography yeah. and sites and things like that. So, you know, being able to know how to do it um, is a lot like when I managed and ran restaurants. It's like, you know how to do all the different jobs. So therefore you can execute more efficiently and be more help, right? Mm -hmm. To those people that you're working with. And I think, you know, if I know how to shoot the work, how do I want it to look? What kind of visual story do I want it to tell? What kind of environment do I want to portray? Because I want it to be authentic and real, mm -hmm. you know? So if I were to hire a photographer, I could voice that by, because I've done it, right? And I think that's the challenge all the time. Um, okay, we got a bunch of questions came in. Um, so Liz is asking, everything is double-sided. Does that mean everything is made from two boards? No. A skateboard is naturally uh, three, uh, five eighths thick. So this is the natural thickness of a board. And so all those colors, what you're seeing on the back is where the grip tape normally would be. And so um, once you take the grip tape off, there's this beautifully preserved area. Um, Bonnie Skorsky is asking, could you demonstrate the hex cut hoop threader? I don't have those in stock right now. Sorry. <laughs> um, Maggie says, I think that's why I feel overwhelming. Why it can feel overwhelming to get a website going and get quality photos. A lot of artists feel inadequate if they don't know how to do all of this. You're right. Silver line of the pandemic is taking the time to figure this all right. out. You know, and and it and again, I think one of one of the things, and I have to repeat this quote to myself all the time. And I have a very dear friend who also reminds it to me: um, comparison is the thief of joy. And when you sit there and you compare yourself all the time to like this person is doing it this way, so many people are moving so much at a faster pace than I am. You know, like how is this happening over here? And I think I constantly have to say, "You're you." you are slow at this, take your time and don't be so hateful to yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I constantly have to remind myself because I, and it's almost kind of like that remembering when I was first learning to make jewelry, right? You like think of a child when they first learn to walk, they know they want to walk. They know that they, they have this urgency to do it. Right. But they fall 
and they can't quite get themselves up and their balance isn't there, but they get frustrated because they know they really want to do it. It was the same way with jewelry. I knew I had all these ideas. I knew I really wanted to do something. My hand skill was very terrible. Like I, you know, and so it like kept happening. And that's kind of how this layer of my business is. It's like, I have these ideas. I know really what I want to do, but my, my skills aren't there yet, but they'll get there. <laughs> You know, so it's like, you just have to remind yeah. yourself that Love it's hard. That. It, it's a challenge, but it, mm -hmm. I remind myself. Mm -hmm. Totally. totally. Show something else. Okay. What do, we, <laughs> what do I have in here? I'm trying to think of what I brought. Um, I showed you the Yeah. Camera. I mean, we, if you showed us everything, I mean, it is 1230. So we don't have to keep going all day. I it's have showed you everything that is fabricated to date. All right. It's right now with me. So if anybody has any last questions, then I think now's your time to ask them to Tara. This has been so wonderful and everybody's just stuck it out. I mean, we, a couple of people had to leave, but, um, you know, people have really stuck it out. So that's been awesome. And I know we've had some sales and like I said, I will, I will send out an email with the link and everything. Um, and, and you're just getting, I think you can read the chat now too, right? There's just lots of, everybody is loving everything. So thank you, everyone. Um, thank you so much for everyone coming. I just want to say that this has been like a beautiful sight to see on a Saturday. So I appreciate you being here with me. So nice. Awesome. Well, thank you all again. And I'm so sad that this is the end of our sessions, but, um, but everybody have um, a wonderful holiday tomorrow, a wonderful weekend. And hopefully the weather, I know it's got cold again here and my poor daffodils were starting to bloom and they're falling over, but. Um, but it's the sun out. Yeah. But now we've all got smiles on our faces from this, um, this last hour and a half. So thank you again, Tara. And thank you everyone for joining us and take care. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Tara. Thank this you. is great. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Reach yeah, out. I have questions. Uh, email me. Email Brianne. Open anytime. Yes, okay. for sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for tuning in. We would like to thank our sponsors for making programs like this possible. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to receive more like it in the future.